What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. Chances are you haven't met me already because 99.4% of you guys aren't subscribed. So today we're talking about log homes. So uh, what it's like to live in a log home, some pros and cons. I'm going to go through a couple things, uh, what I like and don't like, and some of the challenges with living in a log home. I hope that this video helps you out and stay tuned. guys so let's kick the video off here first and foremost I want to say that I don't live in a traditional log home as many people would consider it a uh, round log and chink home uh, this is a post and beam computer cut log home uh, this kit is a Bristol 3 by uh, Lincoln logs out of New York so you basically order the kit and it comes and you basically build the house um, you know all in a kit so uh, it's computer cut it's considered a log home um, if you don't think so I mean the same log on the outside is the same log on the inside um, they're just flat cut on the inside and uh, they're uh, they have ridges in the top of them so that you know you can lay insulation in between um, but all those haters out there yes it's not a traditional log home but you're going to get the gist of it so let's run down a couple pros and cons it all depends on what you like uh, and what's important to you in a home so uh, the things that we consider things that we like may not be something that everybody else likes so first I'm gonna go with noises okay so when you have a majority of your home that's built out of wood um, it uh, expands and contracts with the weather so as humidity rises and falls the house creaks and cracks and moves around um, it essentially um, is a living organism and it will creak and crack a lot so you will hear um, a lot of uh, paneling moving and stuff like that it's, it's a lot of fun to live in a log home uh, because it is a living creature and it's um, you know it's just a lot of fun to hear the house moving around um, now, is it annoying? No, not at all. And it's not like it makes noises all the time. But you'll hear a random pop and, you know, uh, a joint maybe squeak from uh, time to time. But nothing that's anything crazy or sustained. It's just, you know, creaks and cracks that the house makes. So the next thing, I'm going to pick you guys up and we're going to go through the house. I'm going to show you some things that um, are challenging and some things that are unique to a log home. All right, so you see at my computer desk, we have these interior walls that are uh, that are pine boards, but this is an exterior wall here, and these are all the logs. And then you have uh, the basic beams up top, and then these are the pine floors to the upstairs. So you have these big beams running across. Like I said, this is a post and beam. So you have your posts and your beams that go across here. Um, and then, you know, they come out and attach to the other beams. So as you can imagine, these wood, these pine boards uh, and, and the tongue and groove flooring creaks and cracks as the house, um, you know, as, as the house settles and um, does its thing. So <clears throat> walking out here into the living room, great views. Um, a, a lot of log homes have big windows like this. You have structural benefits to using big logs um, and having a lot of structural capabilities here. So the posts and beams, uh, these are all glue lambs. Um, if you know anything about glue lambs, it's like a, a bunch of two by fours that are glued together and sandwiched together. Um, looking up at the vaulted ceiling um, and the old ceiling fan I need to replace, but all tongue and groove pine boards all the way up and down. So one thing that I want to get to next is decorating. So the outside walls, the exterior walls that are made out of the logs are real easy to put nails in and consider it a complete stud. Wherever you want to mount something to is possible. Um, it's not like your traditional drywall, but decorating is a little challenging in a log home. Um, you know, only the interior walls in the house are, um, are uh, drywall. So, you know, 
the, everything else is, is log all the way around and only your interior walls are drywall, like these in, in the bedroom. So, you know, you have nice beams, you have nice wood everywhere. So decorating can be a challenge if you don't wanna paint the logs, so, or paint the wood in general. So that brings me to my next topic is cleaning. So cleaning this house is very difficult because your, no matter what you use, if you use a rag or a cloth, it snags on all this wood. So you need to use, um, I brought a brush. So we use a brush like this, and the brush head allows us to basically brush the cobwebs. As you can imagine, you get all kinds of cobwebs way up in these hard to reach places and nooks and crannies around the windows. So we use a brush like this so that we can get all the cobwebs and stuff out of the way. So just like I rolled in a picture earlier of the computer cut logs here, um, you can see uh, this is basically how it's constructed here is, you know, you have, it, there was a rib here and they cut it off. You can see the rib back in here, but insulation gets packed in between and then they're sat on top of each other. So on this corner joint here where they have the exposed, they basically cut the rib off the top um, for aesthetics. But uh, outside you can see it a lot better. Uh, so you can see the ribs outside on the top. So uh, that gets into my next uh, point about a log home is the walls are really thick. So you can imagine that this is how thick your wall is here. Um, about seven and a half, eight inches wide is how thick your wall is. So when you bring in a traditional contractor um, to put in doors and stuff like that, all of your stuff is set in very, uh, you know, a big distance from the outside of your log. So the outside of the log, then you have your trim piece, and then, you know, this wall is a good, almost, you know, 10 inches thick. So, you know, future updates and putting stuff inside, you know, or updating windows and doors, um, it creates challenges. Uh, you know, bigger uh, wind door sills and window sills than you would traditionally have. So we're in the process of, of redoing the deck right now, but uh, so future updates make it a little bit more difficult. And then there's exterior maintenance on the logs. So, uh, you know, stuff like this where you have a crack that has formed, um, you technically need to seal these as water can get in them and start rotting them out. Now this home is about 20 years old. So uh, it's, it's not too terribly bad, uh, but you need to seal these logs on the outside, keep up with the stain, and uh, otherwise keep the, keep the exterior of the house uh, free from rot and stuff like that. So I really enjoy a log home. It is really awesome to live in one. Um, there, are, there are a lot of maintenance items that you need to worry about keeping up with, but overall, it's pretty sweet to live in a log home. All right, guys, now that we've come back outside here, I wanted to show you uh, some cracks and stuff that have opened up. And you see, this is on the top of the, uh, the curve of the log. So uh, when the water runs down your log face, um, it's rolling right into these cracks. So when I say a lot of extra maintenance that you wouldn't otherwise have in a home, um, you're, you don't have this kind of stuff with vinyl siding. Uh, these are things that I'm going to have to, to uh, fill with caulking and otherwise have a backer rod and fill them up and then they need to be caulked and stained over so uh you know another thing with a log home is they get dirty you can noticeably tell that this uh this side of the house is dirty so uh, where we were on the back side of the house it looked really shiny and looked really you know stained out and this looks really hazy and dirty so until i wash this off it's going to look dusty and just dirty so these are some extra maintenance type items that you need to consider when looking at a log home. All right, so over here you can see more cracks and stuff that have formed in the logs. Um, this is all dirty. So I stained this last year um, and it looked exactly like the back side of the house, but this side of the house gets more wear and tear from the sun because this is a su southern exposure. 
um, and this just gets a lot of dirt and UV rays. So this is something you need to keep up with. Keep a uh, sealer on it after you have uh, stained it. So I go around and caulk these every couple years to make sure that I'm doing my best to keep water out of the cracks. So um, the garage here is a log siding. So the log siding doesn't crack out like a traditional log does. So log siding is really easy to take care of. I'm glad that I have some of that around here. Um, the second addition here on the second story is all log siding. So it gets dirty just the same, um, but it doesn't crack out and otherwise do the same old log stuff. You saw in the other part of the video, the log stairs that go up here or the, uh, the log banister. These things are really cool. I really love the rough cut stairs. You can see the rough sawn stairs. Um, really cool addition, really, really hard to clean. So just consider these kind of things where, you know, you think, well, yeah, that'll be awesome in my house. And yeah, it is, but they are a pain in the butt to clean. The dust and cobwebs stick to every little single thing. So if you don't want to put the time into cleaning and doing those kinds of things, then you certainly need to reconsider uh, exactly what you're looking at. All right, guys, so one last point I wanted to mention is that when you have a floor like this, and literally this is the floor upstairs, and then you see the bottom of the boards here, okay? So you don't have a traditional uh, flooring truss that is up in the ceiling for you to hide mechanicals and things like this. So everything is hidden behind chases like this, where over the, over the bathroom in here, you see how the paneling is in here? This hides a lot of air, air conditioning stuff. Um, the vent for this hides plumbing and electrical that goes up to the second level. So uh, everything is back here in this chase. So if we were to take this board off, this wall only goes up so high, and then where this beam goes in, that's a little crawl space up in there for all the mechanicals that come from the basement up through to the next level. So you can see the return air vent and then up on the second level, I have a return air vent up there. So that all goes through this little chase and these walls down here. So it's not like you're just gonna come in here and say, well, we're gonna renovate this whole thing and we're gonna put the bathroom over here and we're going to, you know, we're gonna put a bathroom up here that overlooks the awesome living room and the, the pond. But guess what? You're gonna have to frame in all of this to hide all your plumbing. So just think about things like this when you're looking at a home or you know, you're looking to build one, you kind of have to stick to their, their floor plan. Um, we considered moving the toilet upstairs, but it'd have to do a lot of work up underneath here. So you, know, you give and you take a little bit, just consider these things in the future. So yeah, there are only a couple cons and sometimes it wouldn't even be considered a con when it comes to decorating and cleaning uh, and, and just being able to or thinking about future updates and how the structure of your home isn't necessarily like we're going to knock out this wall and we're going to put a big addition out here. Um, not necessarily the case. You'll have to cut the logs, um, figure out how you're going to maybe build the new structure along with the logs or get new logs and tongue them in. There's tons of different ways you can go about it, but it's not like a traditional, you know, just cut a hole in a wall, we're gonna put a window here. So you'll most likely be cutting it with a chainsaw and, uh, you know, to put a new window in or something like that. So, uh, and, and then, you know, just the overall upkeep of the logs, uh, it's not too terrible, but you want to stain and seal every couple years to keep your logs from rotting out. So consider those kind of things when you're looking at a log home or you're thinking about building one. Um, they are awesome. They are built like a, a brick house. Um, they are a tank, but they're also challenging in their own unique ways. So I love my home. Uh, it is pretty awesome, but you know, a lot of people 
might say, ah, I'm going to pass on that. That seems like too much work. It certainly is not your vinyl siding house where you're just going to live in a neighborhood and not have to keep up with anything. This is going to be a ongoing project for the rest of your life or however you, long you live in it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you're into. And if you're subscribed to the channel, I guess we'll see you in the next video.